what's up? I'm Steve Becker, United States Marine and instructor of a project. And we are here for another episode of the MDK Wives. It's all about gaining the wives perspective of project graduates after they return home, after they graduated. And I want to invite a special guest, Elaine White. Thank you for joining me today. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day. How's everything going? Good. Everything's going good. Awesome. Awesome. We're going to have some fun here today. We're going to be talking about Matthew White, who is your husband, who graduated class 006 yes. and actually already came back to be a junior instructor. He, a quick turnaround time on 007, which is is a pretty rare thing, but that's pretty awesome. So let's get right into it. When when Matt first came to you and, and told you about the project, he first showed it to you or explained it to you, what was like the first thoughts you had once you kind of saw what it was and saw a little bit of maybe the craziness or whatever? What, what was your first impression? I loved it. I'm from the get go. I'm like, let's do it, babe. Let's get it. And um, if anything, it was hesitation from him, uh, money wise. But I was right away there, like, no, we can get a loan. We can make this happen. I'll sell stuff. We can, you know, I can sew some stuff up. We can sell stuff. I can teach yoga on the side more. And he was like, really, babe? I said, yeah, because. Whenever I want a new adventure or do something, he's always there like, crush it, let's go. So right away we told him, let's do it. Let's, you know, no excuses, let's do it. And he was showing me the videos and I was like, wow, let's do it. I know you can do this. So he, so he didn't have the excuse of my wife is against it. No excuses, I love it. Have a tattoo to my arm right there. No yep. excuses. Okay. That's what we do. That's what we say in our family too, with our kids and us. <laughs> so, awesome. so let me ask you this, just your, just whatever what you think about this. When men, a lot of times they'll come and tell us that they can't do the project because their wives won't let them or the wives, wives say it's too expensive. They can't afford it. Do you think maybe sometimes it's really not the wives and it's maybe them that are thinking that? Cause that's what you just kind of said in your own situation. Yeah, mostly with Matthew, it's always he wants the family to be well in finance, you know, like, can we do this? I'm like, let's do it. We're, we'll be fine. And then we got blessed um, with um, by, by family too. monetarily. We got blessed with a little bit of income like it was meant to be. It came right when he wanted to do the project. And then that blessing came. So we were like, wow, totally meant to be. But he just did it. It's yeah. also just a matter of doing whatever it whatever it takes to get it done. Like you knew it was something that he wanted to do. You really thought he could benefit from it. So it's like, we're going to do whatever it takes because, you know, it, it's expensive. But if you want to make it happen, there's always a way to make it happen is what it sounds like. Exactly. And whenever I go on my crazy adventures and ideas of what I want to do, he's the first one to be like, we're going to make it happen. Let's do it. So I had to give him that and just looking into it and every how he was like he was smiling and just happy about it from the beginning that there alone was like like you know like we got to do it we got to make it happen awesome I, I think he was i think he was just smiling because he, he probably saw the, the videos of the pugil sticks he knew he was going to get to go <laughs> maybe hit someone and he's like yeah that, that right there is going to be worth it the investment right there that alone well, that's a funny story because i was I was actually, I don't want to call it stalking, but I was checking up on the project. And when I saw his hand like that, I was like, do not come home. Do not call me. You're staying there. <laughs> do not in my head. I was like, I don't know what happened, but you're going to stay there. <laughs> That's funny. The wives always tell me that they're like spying on the, the stories, trying to catch a little glimpse, pausing it. Who can they see in the background? Are they still there? Are they still alive? Is it, are they still kicking? It's funny you saw that bandage on. That was while I was going through live, you're saying? Like while we were posting stuff? Yes, yes. And That's I awesome. saw so that you... right away. I was like, nope, you're going to mm -hmm. stick to it, White. Get in there. I don't know what happened, but you're saying it. In my head, I was like, maybe he can hear my mind thoughts. <laughs> I don't care if you have to rip that arm off, bite your hand off, do whatever you have to do, but you're not coming home. Only one way you're coming home. I like it. I yep. like it. So you had such a strong feeling. I mean, you said you saw in him that he really wanted to do this. So of course you're going to support him because that's what a spouse is going to do. And, and even if it sounds like it's going to be a financial hardship, you're going to find a way to make it happen. And I'm sure it wasn't easy to make it happen, but you you did it. What was the the strong reason why you felt like 
you're going to do whatever it takes because he really needs this. What, what, what areas do you feel like he needs it? I know, you know, we have the family, fitness, finance, and faith are the four pillars of the project. What were some of the areas or specific things that you were hoping from your side? Maybe you didn't even tell him at the point, but you're like, yeah, this shit's going to help you in this area. What are some, what are some of those things you wanted him to uh, get out of it? Well, Matthew, I love him to death, but he's so hard on himself. He always, he always wants to be better for us as a family, outside family, people in general to help. But he always is hard on himself and comes down on himself. I can be like, babe, that was awesome. He goes, no, I can be better. I can do better. And I'm like, well, yeah, we know that, but you're good. So it was like a little inner voice he had. Like, I got to get through the 75 hours. I got to do it. I got to do it. I'm not a little B-I-T-C-H. I'm like, you're not, babe. No one thinks that you're not. You can do it. But it's just him and himself mm. always like he can always be better, better himself. Um, pretty much that I wanted him to know that he he has it, you know, he has the ability to help people. He has the ability to crush anything he puts in front of him. He always has, always has. He's gave me that, you know, so I wanted him to go and crush it and know it like you got this, babe. You freaking got it, you know crush it no giving up you got it and he did it i'm super proud i love the mdk project i the trainers the coaches and what it's done for him i love it it's amazing like i i don't know how to describe how amazing it is take the money out take the price out how amazing it truly is i even get like choked up emotional because it's it's Powerful, powerful. That's awesome. That, that's awesome to hear that, you know, this is what this is what it's all about. This is why we do what we do the way we do it. So it's awesome to hear that. So out of those four, it sounds like the faith is the one. The faith meaning the belief in himself, self-confidence that, you know what, I can, I'm a badass mother. I'm a badass and I can do whatever I want to do. And I can reach my ultimate goals when it comes to my family, when it comes to my fitness, when it comes to my finances. So. You knew he could do it. It's just a matter of him having that faith and belief and confidence in himself and, and giving himself more credit almost is what you were hoping he, he can get out of it. Is that right? What it was? And, he, and he has so much confidence too. You know, it's just, he's been through like the baton and just other stuff he puts himself to. I, I call it, he puts himself through workout miseries, you know, to see how far he can go. So this one was like the ultimate boom, you know? So yeah, it, yeah, it was just a, a, to a whole nother level because he that guy does stuff that I'm, I wake up and I'm like, oh, God, what are we doing today, babe? You know, like, what are you putting yourself through today? <laughs> so this, fast. I like it. Suffering, yeah. voluntary suffering. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So so let's talk about it. he makes it through. He, he actually broke his hand like five hours in or something like that. His, his hand looked like a a bowling ball and he was actually just joined us for the, we do a weekly workout with the candidates each week that, that myself and the Navy SEAL run. And he joined us for the workout because graduates can always come back and they have access to that for life pretty much. And he joined us and I asked him, I said, you broke your hand five hours in and all these other candidates that are getting ready to come in are on the call with us. I said, so what did it feel like to have to get medically rolled because you had a broken hand and you couldn't even use it? And he just started laughing. Like he wasn't going to be medically rolled from a little bit of pain. We, we duct taped that thing up. We just duct taped the, the uh, sledgehammers to his arm and he just made it happen. It's just a broken hand. People have shit much worse than that going on and they figure out ways to make it happen. Right. So yeah, that, yeah. that was, that was awesome. What he was able to able to do. So let's talk about it. He comes home, he graduates. What were the immediate, like I'm talking about like minute one, day one, that it's like, all right, something's different. Something changed. What were some of the immediate, differences you saw and transformation you saw and then now you're a few months out from it then what are some of the longer term things that kind of kicked in and you know later on that you realize because this is going to be an ongoing process this is going to be growth and development it's going to go on for years and, and freaking decades so what were some of the immediate things that you noticed when he first came back well i picked him up at the hotel and even there just seeing his face and his smile and his big eyes it was an emotional reunion because I was, I just felt a source of calmness, calmness from him. And I was like, wow, you know, like 
just picking him up, feeling calmness from Matthew White, <laughs> you know, being his wife. I'm like, wow, babe. And we just start talking and it's just, wow. Like, he's like, wow, babe, I just, you know, feel better. Like, I'm so happy I got to do it. He thanked me and I'm like, don't thank me. This is for us. But his first words were, thank you, babe, for allowing me. I'm like, no, babe, this is for both of us. And just excited and happy. But bringing it out, I mean, he's taught me patience. It's weird because a lot of times, you know, the wives bring out the patients or, but no, if anything, Listen, Matthew, I, wanna, I, wanna, I don't want to cut you off, but I have to tell you, if you are learning patience from Matthew White, you must have been an impatient human being. If he's teaching you calmness and patience from that <laughs> freak show, from that freak show, I don't even want to see you in an argument. Yeah, no, you don't. You don't. That's why I'm like, oh my God, my husband's calming me down. But no, he's actually taught us all that. I mean, you know, um, our kids. Our kids know never to give up, always accomplish your goals. Our son's 10, our daughter's going to be four. But even in those time gaps, our husband, Matthew, always tells them, set yourself with what you want and don't give up. Don't ever let nobody crush your goals, your dreams. Keep going. More patience with the kids. He's always been family first with us, always. And um, it brought him closer to his family, too, like, you know accountability for reaching out to his parents and his sisters. We have a group text. We've never had that. We have that now because he brought it out. You know, he got me closer to my family. Um, He was there helping me more through my brother's situation where he came out with the MDK and the brotherhood helped. You know, I had a brother incarcerated. He was out. He helped me through all that calm. He was a calm of, I wasn't calm. So just seeing all that, family and then fitness he's always been into it he's brought me into it more I had an excuse of having kids and not wanting to but I saw his passion since the military always and now so he pushes me like come on babe let's get it done let's do this with the family we try to do dinner all together now and that's been great for the kids they do prayer our kids do the prayer before we eat and that brought us closer. We've always tend, we were always so busy with his schedule being a firefighter and, you know, sometimes being home or overtime or not, or tired that we make it a big deal for us, all of us to sit in a table, have dinner and talk about our day and what was the best day or thing that happened to us in that day, all of us. Or if we have, if I don't feel good, he comes to me and he's like, Hey babe, let's talk. Something's not right. Like he reaches out to find out. And he was like, I'm here to help you. What's going on? He's always been like that, but it's just more now too, where it's like, wow, he's actually like, he actually wants to know, like, I'm like, babe, you really want to know? And he goes, yes. And then I'm like, and he goes, okay, babe. Okay. (laughs) But it's just, it's just amazing. Just everything, everything. And even in his work, I always tell him how proud I am with him, you know, with him being a fire department and what he has to deal with when he's at work situations and how calmer he is, even with the fellow um, firefighters that he works with, you know, he's more calmer. Even if somebody pushes his buttons, I've seen that a lot where he is very, he, he, he controls it. He controls, he breathes and he, you know, he, he works on that really good. Now I've seen now after coming back and it's just growth i mean we do family hikes we try to do a family hike every sunday and if he's at work that weekend we do it a day before he goes on shift or when he comes back from shift but we make that a a family event now all the time no excuses we go if it's cold nothing i mean even it just snowed in carlsbad Two months ago, and we were out there in the snow, people looking at us weird, like, why are you guys out there? I'm like, it's our family hike before he goes to s- on shift. We're all geared mm-hmm. up. We're all together. That's all that matters. That's awesome. So a couple of things, I was just writing down a couple of notes while you're talking. The first thing is, we already said the calmness and the, you know, calming people down, That that is a huge thing for him. But him actually initiating talking and communication and emp- being empathetic and talking, you know, being more vulnerable is a huge one for him because we know he's just a, a savage a caveman. So to have that type of breakthrough, wow, we're doing even more than I realized. Now I'm hearing the shit that you're saying that 
he's actually implementing in life, and that's freaking awesome. But the, the one thing that stood out the most is when you said about dinner, that you're having dinner together. Like when I was a kid, we there would never be a dinner where the family, there were six of us, six kids. There would never be a dinner where everyone lasted the entire dinner. I don't remember not one single dinner where everyone lasts, where someone didn't leave the table, pissed off, angry, throwing shit across the house. So that, that you've pulled that together and having dinner together as a family on a regular basis, making it a regular thing and eventually just making it automatic and making a habit. Like that's just the way it goes. And not just sitting there because you have to sitting there because you want to and communicating and talking about what's going on. Like that right there makes it all worth it. Everything else you said is awesome. But that right there is the one that stands out and, and makes this thing worth a, a million times the value of what you got. But just for that simple little thing alone, like what a huge breakthrough. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, it, we, we love it. We totally love it. And he's just, I just love it. Like there's times where I go to him when I need help and he knows how to like help me calm me down or situations that I have. He's like, babe, just calm down. You know, because I want to fly off the handle immediately. And he goes, no, babe, breathe it in, breathe it out. You got this. You know, he shows me both sides of it and stuff. And I'm like, oh, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> Us wives and women hate admitting that. So we're like, OK, fine. I'll breathe it out. I'll talk it over. <laughs> but yeah, it's just amazing. And he's people around me, too. I mean, I have uh, friends and they tell me, hey, you know what my husband needs this, like, oh my God. And it, it's, it's crazy. Cause they, my friends see a change in him. My friends that, you know, had no idea we did the MDK project and stuff. They see it and they tell me, mm -hmm. you know, so that there alone is amazing. Cause I'm like, wow, other people see it too. And I haven't talked about it with life and how busy we are and stuff. But for my friends mm -hmm. to notice that is, I love it. It's, it's noticeable. Wow. That's awesome. And, and again, that's like a, a force multiplier where just by operating the new way he is not even realizing you know, intensely doing it, how it's having an effect on people. You don't even realize it, realizing that there's other people watching and learning and picking up on things and then probably maybe taking some of that and bring it back to their own lives, their own families. Like what a, what a multiplier that is to spread out to multiple people and generations. That's freaking awesome. And speaking of kind of generations, where do you see, now a different or the, the future or the trajectory of your relationships with him and family going now since he's been back and this is kind of the next level of Matthew White. Pure positive I mean it's been going great whatever we plan out what we're gonna do if we have family vacations or whatnot but just our communication it's just gotten better too. I usually would shut down and not give him a chance, but now he, he brought tools to help me to open up with him, you know? So just communicating with him, talking, like we've always been close. Like we're freaking best friends. I mean, we joke around, you know, but it's just amazing the level that we're at now too. We're just so mm -hmm. much like this, like even at nighttime when our kids go to sleep, that's our time to talk, talk about our day. We have deep conversations. It's just amazing. And I just see the future more positive. I mean, Matthew loved going and helping and I supported that decision. I was like, go babe, go root, go root them on. Let me know. Keep me posted. Keep me posted, you know? And, and it's just, it's amazing. And the brotherhood that he's built from there um, is amazing as well. And I feel like that, also helps him out because in the military he had the brotherhood and now with the MDK he has it. Um so I'm just I'm grateful for that too. And awesome. nothing but positive for the future for all of us, for him, for the kids, for us as a unit. I've all we've always said it's us versus the world. And I always tell him we got this babe. It's us. Keep going, keep crushing and we'll have people follow us. If not, we'll have people just Time to, you know, let them go because there's always going to be negative people not loving the confidence you're building or seeing you happy. They're not going to like that. So those are the people that we've been shedding, you know, from him coming through the project and this. That's awesome. That's freaking amazing. Uh, the things you're saying about him, about, you know, opening up and this type of stuff, that, that's freaking awesome. 
that's good stuff. So what would you say to another woman that's in your shoes where the, their, their husband is presenting this to them, this, you know, a pretty fairly expensive trip that it just looks like they're going to hang out with the boys and just do some boot camp activities and have some a good old time, it looks like. And they're maybe not so much on board with it. They're not sure. They're a little uncertain if it's going to be worth the investment. Or what would you say to that, to that potential future MDK wife out there that's kind of thinking that way? I would say, let them do it. See the videos, reach out to other MDK wives, you know, get their perspective. Um, Cause they have a lot of, they grow, it's growth. And that's what you want as a wife. You want that marriage to be best friends, good marriage, no arguing. You want that. And you want them to better themselves for the family. So I would say, reach out to the wives, see the videos talk about it, you know, do research on it. And it benefits, like I said, take the amount out of the picture. I know it's hard, but take that out of the picture and just focus on what they will gain, how they will grow and how they come back. You know, like now, like it's so hard. Cause I also have friends that their marriages didn't last through COVID and I'm like, it's really like, come on. Like it builds you stronger. That's what you want. So I would say, let them do it. Go for it. You, at the end, we also get benefits from it. You know, we, we, he's helped me be more confident, more just, it's amazing. It's just amazing. It's just powerful. Like that's the word that always comes up. It's just a powerful transformation to see it in 75 hours, how much you guys do with, you know, being active classwork everything you guys put them through just the transformation in those 75 hours that I feel like a lot of men could benefit from. And I feel like the wife should be on board. Sure. Some will think, Oh no, but it's a lot of money, but this and that I, but in the long run, your family will truly benefit from it a lot. That That's freaking awesome. And you're actually the third of the, Wives that I've interviewed that said the same thing, that if there's wives out there that are uncertain, because I told you, the men always use the wives as an excuse. They'll be want to do it. They'll want to do it. And then they'll get back to us a day or two later and say, oh, my wife isn't on board, so I can't, I'm not allowed to do it now. But we know a lot of times that's just a freaking excuse. That's them getting a little scared. And sometimes the wives maybe do get those thoughts into their head. But you're the third of the MDK wives that said they should talk to other wives. And I didn't even cross my mind. Like, what a what a great thing that we can even set up is like, if they're unsure, have them jump on the phone. We, we have the men jump on the phone with other graduates. And of course, the graduates are going to just talk to their man shit, but actually to get the wives on the phone with the potential candidates, wives, like what a huge thing. So I wish you could talk to the, some of these wives with your positivity and support. So you should be expecting some phone calls. I'm gonna have a bunch of these potential wives giving you a call up and, and connect with you. That would be freaking awesome. That'll be freaking awesome. I'm like, hello. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> awesome. All right. So I want to thank you, Elaine, for joining us and for sharing a story with you and Matthew. It's freaking awesome. And it just continues to further just show me and validate what we're doing here. Like hearing it coming from the other side of the lines, from the perspective of the wives. This is huge growing and learning process, even for me, even though I'm the one putting them through the suffering and the torture. I'm learning just as much or even more from the wives that I am that want to talk to the to the men who are screwed up in the first place. So thank you for joining me today. And I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. So this has been another episode of the MDK Wives, hearing about it from the other side of the lines, from the wives' perspectives. If you want some information about the project, either for yourself or if you're a woman and you see this and you think it might be a good fit for your husband, just put a comment down below or just send me a private message or click the link somewhere around this video and we would jump on the phone and see if the project is the right program for you and see if your husband has what it takes to become part of this lifelong, never ending, continuing brotherhood of just kick-ass men of fire. And I will talk to you soon. This is Steve Eckert, instructor of the project. Thanks again, Elaine, for joining me. Thank you for having me. Let me know if you're Matthew. You need anything, anytime. Give me a call. 24 hours a day, we are here. You are freaking awesome. No Thank excuses. You. No excuses.